Welcome back to Colors Are Crutch. My name is Max Sterberg, also known as Wounded Satellite, in my new location here where I just moved to the other day. And I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic, on a journey, beautiful co host, Max Pfefferman, the Floralian Man, the Tim Jessica guy for a little bit here as well, the Dampening Sphere Destroyer. How you doing today, Max? I'm I'm doing good, man. I'm a little a little little hangry. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. A little hangry. Still little feeling hangry. the energy levels or no? Uh, no, nah, it's kind of dropped off. Like I'm feeling actually pretty pretty run down, tired in terms of like just like I want to go curl up on my on like a couch and go to sleep every day. It's Dude, that I'm is at. my last couple of days. It's Wednesday when we're recording this. Monday I moved. Then had a friend come over. Then I went to a dinner. Then I went climbing. As I'm climbing with my friends in the evening, they were like, screw it, let's go back to my place and hang out until very late. So we did some things and we're up till 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> and then I slept at their place. I had Suki with me, so it was fine. But I also didn't bring her harness or leash or anything. She was just with me. So then I wake up and where I was was an hour away from where I live now. And I worked in like three and a half hours. And I was like, why would I go home? So then I borrowed their dog's harness and a random piece of rope to use as a leash. Went on a hike with Suki. Went to work. I didn't get home till almost 1 a.m. last night. And that was my first time back home. Jesus Christ, man! I am too old for that shit now. Like if I if I when I stay out till three o'clock in the morning, it takes me like a week to recover from that. Yeah, we are. But yeah, at the age of twenty seven, my guy. We're doing okay for now. Dude, I'm turning forty six in less than two months. Less than two months. Dangerous. Terrifying. Terrifying. Dangerous. When you that, get a toupee uh, and buy a Mustang, when is that? Nah, when's it never, when's it coming? It never, coming? never. If my hair goes, the hair goes. I'm not like, I'm not gonna fight it. Like, I'm not gonna go get like the fucking like Rogaine or whatever that shit is. That, nah, I'm like, hair's gone. Didn't need it anymore. You're not gonna go to Turkey and get a hair transplant. No, no fuck that no. shit. No, hair's gone. Hair's gone. Move on. Move I on. Think, I don't think I'm ever gonna lose mine. I think it's here to stay. Careful, careful. When I was. <laughs> When I was your yeah, age, my hair looked uh, pretty thick, dude. My hair was my pretty hair thick. Is... But the diet, the diet is working. I will tell you that it is working. That's good. Yeah, uh, first first week, I lost uh, twelve point one pounds. That is yeah. a lot. That's really good. That's really really good. Yeah, yeah. It, it melts off. I mean, I'm fucking starving, but it it works. It works. That's awesome. That's super cool. <laughs> this, this is going to be kind of a weird episode because uh, it's going to be a shorter episode because. Number one, you just moved, right? And you got stuff going on. So that's going to be a short soon. episode. Yeah, and, and, and the CDH scene has been relatively drama-free for the last, uh, like, you know, f- few months even. Like, I can't think of the last, like, there's been no cheaters caught. There's been... Well, there haven't know, been as many there, there haven't been as many online events, right? Like, there that was there are the online people. events. They're still happening. They're not populated, though. They're not popular, right? Everyone's playing, you know, in person. Lots of smaller, like, local events going on um, but no no drama no one's cheated there's been no like uh, you know fights or you know falling outs between you know tournament organizing organizations everything's pretty quiet you know kind of remarkable kind of nice yeah. everything's you know? chilling bro yeah, and I think everyone's chilling. sort of a lull waiting for MH3 to officially drop and become legal and then <sighs> give us know. a nice little boost to the format that's it's gonna be refreshing it's going to be a shakeup. It's going to be a really yeah. cool shakeup. I'm very excited for it. Which that will be, I believe our next episode next week will be the set review for MH3. So if you're looking forward to that one, that's when that will be coming. We want to make sure all the cards are actually out this time. Because last time we did the set review was like a couple days before all the cards were come out. And some bangers came out the last couple days. We were like, okay. Whoops. I don't know. Yeah. We, we did a little breakdown of MH3 before talking about a few of the broken cards. We just totally forgot about Volatile Storm Drake. It was already out. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. That's okay. And th- yeah. That one's not like a like a format warping different card. Like it's something that's another effect of something we already have. So yeah. I think it's okay to talk about that in the set review, which we will. We should probably have a guest on for that too. I don't know who. Oh, we will have a guest. 100%. Yeah, we'll, th- we'll have to think about that a little bit. You know, yeah, yeah. Leave a comment below who you want. Who would you who like would you, to see? Who would you like to see on the show sometime soon? Maybe not for this interview, but just for random episodes. Who who do you want to see? I mean, the, the one thing we will talk about a little bit today in terms of MH3, and we are taking a little bit of a risk because it is possible that there's another spoiler that comes along that's like, holy shit, I want to build this commander. But right now, like, I, I think there's the <laughs> yeah, I think there's only basically two commanders in the set that 
um, are exciting from a CDH perspective. The, the obvious one and the one that I think a lot of people are kind of already working on is Nadu. How do you say it? Nadu? Nadu? Nadu. 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 I, uh, I don't know if you saw Gold Sabretooth posted an alter he did or a little drawing he did of Nadu on Facebook. Um, oh, I didn't see that, but I'll find it and it, you will now see it. Um, uh, I purchased that. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> damn. We're getting serious. We're getting yeah, serious yeah, yeah. here. I did. Yeah. I did purchase that in a do. It's fucking sick looking, dude. I was looking at it and I was like, honestly, I kind of hate the art on this card and I hate the profile one too. And then he posted that and I was like, yep. That's, that that's it right there. That's mine to do right there, bro. I messaged yeah. him immediately. Yeah. And then the, the other one is uh, Necrobloom. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about both of them in a little bit. We have some um, disagreements on Necro Bloom, but I think do it's we cool. disagree? Do we disagree? I don't know if we disagree. I don't know. We'll, we'll I don't know. If, I don't know if my opinion's even formed enough to disagree yet. I don't know. That's we'll fair. see. That's fair. We'll see. But you've already you've already brewed up Nadu, right? I do have a Nadu list. It will be in the description below. The name of my deck. I'm quite proud of this one, Max. Do you know Dead Baby Jokes? Yes. I'm not going to yeah. tell the dead baby joke on screen, but my my deck name is the tip of a hat to the dead day baby joke. It is called target practice dash. How many kittens does it take to paint a wall? It depends how hard you flicker them. What? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And I'm guessing uh, displacer kitten is the uh, the feature well, of that deck. Yeah, yeah. Displacer yeah. kittens cracked in this deck, dude. Yeah. It targets and it resets the do. Yeah, yeah, it just goes so, infinite, right? I mean, pretty not easily. infinite, but like it's non deterministically infinite, right? Like a very similar type of situation to where I'm going off about Nixilis and Pingers, and it's like, hey, like I have it here. Would you guys like to scoop? But they're like, Pluto, and like you never don't get there. Yeah, so before we get into that, like, let me read, actually read the do real quick just so we can. Sure. So, Hopefully you guys are already aware of it, but if you're not... like, If, just... if you're not aware of Nadu, uh, Nadu Winged Wisdom, one green, blue, three mana, one colorless, Simic colors, legendary creature, bird wizard, it is a three four with flying, and has the ability... I'm going to read this twice. <laughs> Creatures you control have, parentheses, or not parentheses, quotations, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. This ability triggers only twice each turn. I'm going to read that one more yeah. time. Creatures yeah. you control have, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it, in, put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. This ability triggers only twice each turn. To clarify a couple things, do gives this ability that I just read twice to each of your creatures. So it is not twice triggering in a turn total, it is twice triggering for each creature each turn total. Or you can reset Nadu and it can happen again. Yeah. Some other if, important facts yeah. about this ability. The land comes into play untapped. Another very important factor of this ability, you do not draw the card. You reveal the card and put it into your hand, which means you are not triggering Bowmasters. Yep, yep. <laughs> This shit yeah. is and crazy. It, it's it's crazy because like you think about it, like that means every creature you put in play has this ability, and if you flicker that creature, it has the ability again. So you know the twice per turn applies to each instance of the creature that you have on the battlefield, and and the shenanigans that you can do with that are are broken. My oh, biggest so issue broken. with it, my biggest issue with it, is just that the cards that tend to target your own creatures tend to be kind of subpar, lower quality cards for the most part, with a few exceptions. So. Right? If you look at the way a lot of people are brewing Nadu, mm -hmm. you will notice that they are... It's almost very similar to, I think, like a tangentially similar commander to talk about with this is like Rakdos the Muscle. Where like, we know the commander is super strong. We know what it does is super busted. If you look at the packages of cards that deck is playing to make it work, it is so deep on trash fucking cards. Like, like really, mm -hmm. really, really low card quality specifically for that. And Nadu does hit kind of a similar sphere. I believe that my brew is slightly more commander agnostic than some of the other ones. I think Obnixilis is kind of a good template for these types of decks where, you know, Nadu is definitely going to be more total commander centric than Obnixilis. But like, if you look at the way I brewed Ob, Ob has like eight cards that are really dedicated to the Ob plan. And then everything else is just an, a commander agnostic deck that can win on its own. It's not really an issue. And this deck does have the capability to win on its own. Like, I am playing Hullbreaker Horror. You know, it does have Unctus with Untappers. Those work as well. 
you're able to assemble other types of win conditions in some ways, but it's really a pretty overall low quality weak deck without do. If you look at the cards I'm playing to make it work, like cards that I wouldn't be playing otherwise. Sylvan Safekeeper, Afeto Alchemist, Bristly Bill, Seeker of Skybreak. You know, we're on Trinket Mage and Tribute Mage. We're on Unctus. We're on Scoot Swarm. That's eight by itself right there. But then you're yeah. also adding in what I think are the best calling cards for the deck, where I'm talking about specific cards that are just especially gas reader commanders. Having Sea King's Blessing and Sylvan Paradise, which are two cards that are one mana instance, one is green, one is blue, they do the same thing. You target any number of creatures on the battlefield, and they become either blue or green, depending on that card. Um, what I love about this card, which by the way, small fun fact, it is correct to <laughs> target all creatures on the battlefield with this, uh, because you can fuck over your opponents like Sissai decks and shit, which is hilarious. Uh, but they are, if you have four creatures on the battlefield, Sea King's Blessing is now better than Ancestral Recall, if you have Nadu on the battlefield. Yep. Because it just targets four of your creatures, and you draw four cards for one mana at instant speed. Right, but if you don't have Nadu on the battlefield, the card is, is shitty. The card is 100% always dead. 100% yeah. dead. Yeah. Complete dead. garbage, yeah. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of it. Like, if you look at... Which even, I guess, you can cut, kind of like the mana base. I'm playing uh, specifically Mishra's Factory is really the only, the only like, list target land. Otherwise, you get a couple. Like, Okina Temple, the Godfather, Grandfathers. It's just, like, you know, untapped legendary green land. That one doesn't really matter. Same with Teleria. It's an untapped legendary blue land. Like, those aren't really an opportunity cost or low card quality. But you get about 10... Oh, I'm sorry. And then also you get Shuko and Lightning Greaves in the artifact slots, <laughs> which are, like, the best cards in the deck with Nadu. They are the calling card to play the deck. Are they free equip equipments? Because they just let you target all the yeah. things twice. So you're so really I'm rocking like a, a package of like twelve to thirteen ish cards. Oh yeah. I have, Paradise I, Mantle, Lightning Greaves. Yeah. Strings. Yeah. I've hidden strings. Yeah, I saw hidden strings. I saw that. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, looking at your list yeah. right now. Yeah. 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 Like, well, I mean, some of these cards are interesting, like uh, does new no new form doesn't trigger because it's not targeting it. Uh um, no. You got Bristly Bill in here. It's pretty hot. So Bristly Bill is crazy because, yeah, it's every single time a land enters. And you have to remember, like, one, we're playing fetch land, so that's easy to work with Bill. Two, Nadu puts lands into play untapped, so it lets you chain yeah. with Bristly Bill. And then, like, you also see landfall in the form of Scoot Swarm. Very similar yeah. idea here where when you have, let's say, a Shuko on the battlefield or a Lightning Greaves, really doesn't matter which one, but a free cost equipment... If you have three creatures in the battlefield, and one of those is a Scoot Swarm, and you get, you know, f six Nadu triggers, and two of those are lands, you're going to get two Scoot Swarm triggers. Let's imagine we're not even at six yet to start multiplying the Scoot Swarms, but then you get two more creatures from those two lands, which gives me four more Scoot Swarm triggers, or four more Nadu triggers. And then if I hit one more land out of that, and maybe that's my six land, which now kind of starts doubling my Scoot Swarms, I get more, two more Nadu triggers. And now if I hit another land, now I'm going to get you know, three more creatures or whatever from Scoot Swarms, which gives me six more, and it just storms right, off and right, becomes right. infinite from that perspective. So right. it lets you it lets you chain through your entire library in a very similar way that Displacer Kitten does, where, same idea, if I have three creatures in the battlefield, one of them's a Displacer Kitten and a do, and, you know, a Mana Dork or something, and I free equip it, and I get six triggers, you know, at least one of those is a non-creature spell that I can cast, I cast that, I flicker Nadu with Kitten, and now I can re-equip everything again and get six more triggers. <laughs> right. And you're just and you're just and you're just what? You're just winning the game basically with, with walking ballista as an outlet or you know, finale yeah. basically. Yeah. Those are the primary two win conditions, yes. But you get to play Heath Area. You get to play some of these really shitty lands that actually happen to be well, pretty fine. good in here. They're they're fine. They're just untapped colored lands. There's no downside to playing them. And they just yeah. happen to have yeah. a separate. Okina, Okina Temple yeah. <laughs> Okina. <laughs> Yeah. They targets. Yeah. Minamo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They target. Great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great, Absolutely. It's, it's so just, funny. It's just funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting deck. I think it's, I think it's, it'll be fine. I think it'll see some play. I think, you know, once people understand what they're dealing with and you just, you know, shut off and as fast as you can, you'll be fine. Yeah. And yeah, then the deck becomes a, a non, on, becomes a non-player at the table as soon as that Nadu's Kill still. on site commander. 100% yeah. kill on site yeah. commander. Yeah, and it dies pretty easily. Well, it's a three four actually. So it's a three four, yeah, it does not. It's die got easily. a big ass. It's got a big ass. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't die easily. It does die to pyroblast and red blast though, which is good. Not so. if I fucking sylvan paradise and turn it green. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's true. That's also, true. like this is a deck that plays. <laughs> this is oh, a deck God. that plays a lot of weird protection. Like we are on sylvan safekeep. 
Sylvan Safekeeper also targets, lets you chain your lands for more targets and more draws. Right, we right. are we are on Spellskite as protection. When you redirect Absolutely. Spellskite, you get more Nadu triggers. We yeah. are on Legolas's Quick Reflexes. We are on Veil of Summer. Like this, this is a deck with a lot of protection. It does. Another, it does. It kind of like the protection spells are like yeah. work perfectly. Work perfectly another, in this deck. Oh my god! Secret all star. Like we we put so many cards in our hand. Like March of Swirling Mist can be another Sea King's blessing. Like cool, protect my whole board, draw six cards. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Like, I like it. It's really good. And the crazy thing about do triggers is when you're going through and casting all these spells with the attempt to storm off and like gain all this value and draw all these cards. A really common risk when you're storming off with spells and you know Ob as an example as a storm deck is you run out of mana. Like that's normally the bottleneck. Is but you're putting you lands in resource. Play. But Nadu continuously puts untapped lands into play, and so you end up gaining more mana naturally. It's crazy. Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, I like it. I think it's got legs. I think it's got no, legs. I think it is the most clearly viable commander that has been printed in a long time. Like I don't think I don't think there's been a commander printed that you look at and everyone just fully agrees this is broken to this level in in a while. Um, we're like, there's other commanders that we understand. Like, oh, cool, this could be viable. Like, you see stuff like Rack of the Muscle, right? You see stuff like Stella Lee, and I mean, Stella Lee, I would say, is a closer one. People are like, this is definitely like viable. Like Rack of the Muscle, people are like, this could definitely be a thing. You know, cards like Omnixilis and Italian and Brennan, they're like, this seems strong. We'll see if it works out. Nadu is like the first one printed in quite a long time that people look at and they're like, this is just broken. Yeah, yeah, and it, it even works as an outlet for Hullbreaker Har, right? Because yeah. Hullbreaker Har ability yeah. just. You just target over and over again. And targets and do, maybe. Deck. Targets yeah. do. So it works as an outlet. Yeah, that's pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I might want to play this. I don't like it's it. It's so much fun. Gold fishing this deck is a blast, bro. Yeah, I'll have it's to like mess with it. It's an absolute fucking blast. But really, I will say to everyone who is going to be facing against this deck incessantly very soon, kill Nadu. Yeah, just kill Nadu. <laughs> kill Nadu immediately. Don't yeah. let it happen. Yeah. So put, put oh, some more yeah. removal in your decks anyway. You're not doing yeah. enough. So add a, little, add a little. Add a little. So I think that's the other one that's that's... That we're going to talk about. I haven't. I don't think either of us have explored as much as you've explored this as Necker Bloom, um, and I think that's the only other command in the set that's even worth like talking about, at least as of this recording. Yeah. Um, and I'll read this one real quick. So Necker, it's the Necker Bloom, legendary creature plant, costs Abzan and one. It's a two seven, so huge ass. Uh, and fall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a zero one green plant creature token. If you control seven more lands with different names, create a two two black zombie creature token instead. So it's like kind of like a, what do you call it? Uh, Field of the dead. Field of the dead stapled onto a body. And then the important part is it says land cards in your graveyard have dredge two. And that and, is what's important. Yeah, because it, it it basically you know it now combos Dakmore Salvage with with Gitrog Monster. So as long as you have Necrobloom. And get drug monster and a land in your graveyard. Every land in your graveyard is is a deck more salvage, right? Yeah. So all of those Gitrog combos happen, but now you get access to white as well. Um, and what I like about that is this is a deck that can run a wide diversity of other combos. Like because it's on white, it can also be a Hulk deck. It can also do all of the Rule of Lost Stacks out shenanigans. It can do a lot of different things, and I'm not sure how you'd fit in the brewing space because you don't want a Rule of Law with Gitrog because Gitrog does require the casting of spells, but. It's a deck that lets you run a Gitrog side package as being one of the win conditions while also being focused on doing a lot of other things versus Gitrog, which is so all in on Gitrog. This is a deck that gets to Gitrog but does not require Gitrog to do other things. Yes, yes. And and it's got it's got a, a, a really clean backup plan built into the commander too. I mean you could just you know do some landfall shenanigans, end up with a bunch of two twos and beat face. I mean that's Murder. that's kind of yeah, that's yeah. just there, right? That's built in. Unlike Gitrog where like if the combo gets stopped, you're like, Okay, pass. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh you've you've got a doth a dothy woodwalker in play. Oh, okay. But imagine oh. being worried about a Gitrog and then you just get hulked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but also, or, Gitrog, Gitrog. Imagine if Gitrog could play. Yeah, great. exactly. Imagine really if Gitrog like, could play Gretelball. Sure, yeah. get fucked. <laughs> yeah, really good. Yeah, or that's, or even or even life. Ranger Captain, Ranger Captain to go find a discard outlet. Or yeah, you know, that's no, hot. like really, like Ranger Captain finds you like your your putrid and stuff like that. It exactly, really, it does it does assemble well, which is nice because in Gitrog you need this ridiculous density and redundancy for the different cards, and I think that White <laughs> solves a lot of the issues there. Like, yeah, cards like Ranger Captain find things. You know, you get a slightly higher overall tutor package of things that can do stuff. Um, I like it. I'm a fan. And it does just get, like, 
the good white cards. Like having access to white is very powerful from a removal perspective, from a silence perspective, from a protection perspective. It's really nice. Yeah, you lose. I mean, not having Gitrog in the command zone, you lose. A, you know, a draw engine at that point in the deck because that's one thing Gitrog always did was draw lots of cards off of you know off of lands being you know, fetch lands, etc. Everything you know yeah. that that goes away. But but white does make up some of that ground. You. This is a deck that probably can play Trouble in Pairs if it wanted to. Um, it, Esper, it def- Sentinel. Esper Sentinel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, those all come into play. Yeah, um, yeah I think it's it, it's interesting. I, I don't know if it's powerful enough to be, you know, to compete with the big boys. We'll have to see how it, how it plays out. It might be a little slow just because you're looking at, you know, three plus one, three colors plus one, and you have to play a five mana, you know, frog. To, to, to really but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's one of those things where it's like again like it, it has the ability to get rock but I don't think that's its only thing it's trying to do right like I think you play one or two discard outlets you play, yeah you don't have to play Dakmore at all I think you play one Eldrazi Titan not two and you just kind of like work your way through that while having backup plans like Hulk I actually think this would be a really really good deck for a Shia combo Make infinite land yep. triggers. Get infinite yep. two twos. Um, I, I think, think I think it's valid. gonna I think it's gonna lean on how much value you can drive out of dredge, right? If you can really get some good value out of dredge, turn that into you know card advantage essentially by you know the composition of the deck. Then I think this has real gas to it. But if it, if you can't if you can't make the best out of that dredge, you can't like get ahead of the other decks that are drawing a million cards off risk studies. Then I think this deck's gonna struggle a little bit. Um, I think in the long term, uh, but it's definitely interesting, definitely worth brewing, and I think uh, we'll see it. We'll see yeah. it a bit. It's cool. This yeah. looks like a Tuka deck through and through. My God, hundred <laughs> percent. Tuka deck. Yeah, like I get yeah. to play Gaia's Cradle. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to activate Plant Token. <laughs> Can I make my Tutu Zombie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's some. Other, there's other stuff to think about too. Like, you know, is there synergies here with like deserts that do damage somehow? I don't know. I gotta think about it. There's there's a lot of brewing space in this one. Yeah. I don't have a list yet. If anyone does have a list, please uh, put it in the link. Yeah. Uh, put the link in the uh, in the comments because you know, uh, I'm very curious you, to see what you're coming up with. You know, we're such big fans of Abzan on this show. Abzan trash can. Abzan trash can, baby. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I, I I like Abzan as a color combination. I just don't like time <laughs> i think when it's cool shit like carador i don't like time yeah yeah you do tim nikadamas that's that's cool i'm down with tim that nikadamas okay yeah, yeah. You, get to, you get to do some fucking hulk shenanigans you get to you get to mess around and find out it's a good time yeah it deserves to have a, a good deck in in, in in the format not time that's not time nice. yeah time yeah. time is an okay deck it's not absolute unplayable garbage it's yes, it just is. it's yeah, completely it's unplayable playing. garbage Gotcha, no. That deck. no one should ever play it and friends don't let friends play time guys friends Come don't on. let friends use the database um <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> time is on the database that tells you time a lot. is time on the hey but so is uh-huh. Bob and kid it bro get out of here get yeah out. trash decks are on the database what kind of do you have any other events coming up i mean the only thing like there's just there's been kind of a lull in big events right in the last we've got countdown well so we Countdown's actually coming I, up i have, I have I have SCG Con Vegas uh, in like a week and a half. I'm going to be at that one. I'm going to be traveling mm-hmm, with, with mm-hmm. a bunch of friends for that one. So if you're going to be at SCG Con Vegas, let me know. Hit me up. We'll figure it out. Try and meet up, play some games, do whatever. Um, yeah, Top Deck Titans. Top Deck Titans is coming up. Same weekend. Yeah. Oh, it's the same weekend. Yeah. It's the same weekend, so I can't play in it. Otherwise, I would. Um, it's kind of the only, you know, the online tournaments have kind of died off. You know, I haven't seen more than like 25 people <laughs> to it's been like 30 some of them have been hitting almost 40 but yeah it's been it's been really low numbers which still I, disappoints I, me i would love to get it back to where it was i might i might play in this one if i can get clearance like i might play it they've got 28 people registered so far so if you're We're thinking about playing in one this is one i would recommend for those that don't know what Top Deck Titans is is basically um the path of the peak series merging with top deck so it's pretty cool uh, should be well enforced, so there's not cheating and issues. So I think it's worth doing. So yeah. I might play in that one. And then, you know, end of June is Cowtown, which is going to be massive. Yeah, it's like 256. 256. Yeah, 256, 256 players. Dude. Yeah, still only a cut to top 16, dude. How many points are we going to need? 18? Like, just, yeah. Well, no, it'll be 17. It'll still be the cut. Just you know, you won't be locked. Not 17. as many 17ers. Yeah. 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 And then. 
And then July, you've got uh, you've got some stuff maybe coming up in July. Is yeah, so the... July, well, we, we do have Snowy Summit. That one is a for sure. Snowy Summit is starting on July 13th. It's going to be here locally in Denver, Colorado. So super, super excited for that one. Really cool. They're going to have food catered at the event. If you have a ticket to the event, you get food. It's free. Oh, nice. uh, I love that. I love that concept. So I, I'm super excited. I know I'm going to be at that one. I know Waffle's going to be at that one. A bunch of, bunch of really cool people are coming to Snowy Summit. It's going to be the first like really big event in Denver, so that's super exciting. And then I, I'm in talks with GalaxyCon to see about some of their events in July as well. Um, we'll see if those end up working out or not, but super excited for those if it does. Definitely something I want to do. And then in August, we have the Invitational slash the Open for people who do not make the Invitational. Um, some other other large events. Yeah, and then and then in on my birthday, on July 20th, 21st, my birthday is the 21st, is the Fishbowl 4, which is also yes. definitely worth talking about. That event's been getting better and better. I highly recommend people show up for that if you can. Uh, they've got already got 134 people registered for that event. So it's going oh, wow. to be a good one. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, yeah, I mean, that was kind of my backup if it doesn't work out with GalaxyCon was going to Fishbowl. So I, I don't know. Should I talk to Hire about reserving me a ticket? I don't know. Uh, yeah, better get on it now because it's gonna sell out. So. Yeah, I know that was gonna be gone. I mean, Fishbowl three was so good. Fishbowl three was such a fucking blast. I had a great time there. Yeah, yeah. If any, I, I, I can't even go because I will be. I'll actually be on a, a ship at that point. I believe. Yeah, I'll be in on a Alaska. ship in, in Alaska at that point. So yeah, we'll I, have to figure out. Do I do I have to replace you with a guest for a week? No, dude. We're going on vacation, dude. Vacation. Because who's, who, who's going to edit the shit? Are you going to edit it? Are you going to edit the videos? That's a good point. Yeah, you, you yeah. Got me there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are gonna have to live with us. We'll, we'll try to record a couple extra episodes, and then like I can schedule them for release while I'm while we're, while I'm traveling. So that's fair. It'll be fine. That's fair. Yeah, and that's it. Like I don't think there's anything else beyond that coming up yet. We're gonna get the new season of of uh, the championship series. So that you know officially will start at the open. The yeah. open is the first event of the new season. So yeah. it's pretty cool. I mean, we could talk through the new the new top of the leaderboard here. Okay, yeah, we can we can briefly cover the leaderboard. We don't we don't got to briefly. Get into, we don't have to spend know. too much if, time. If you just want to talk about any notable updates, so if, you, if you feel so inclined, feel free to mention. I'll, I'll I'll just I'll just I'll just mention that you know you know the notable player at the very top is of course uh, Mr. Super Jorman. Uh, with 1,780 points, then like almost 200 points below him is like the Fuck distant, off. the distant, <laughs> the distant second place guy, Mr. Max Stur- Stur- Stunberg, Stunberg, Sternberg, Max Sternberg. Oh, hey, that's that's you. Yeah, wounded satellite What's in up, second bro? place. Number two, <laughs> baby. Number two. Yeah, pretty nice. Pretty nice. It. Congratulations. Congratulations. Feels, You're almost your first good. loser. Your first loser. Yeah, very Fuck nice. Off. <laughs> and then and then tied for third and fourth we've got uh ian comedian and and evan who's freedom waffle and then right behind him we have hopefully you guys have already right, watched the uh right behind him. yeah you got yeah right behind them yeah right like right behind them like almost almost the same as max and, and these other guys we have at, at fifth at really close fifth we have jason who's uh Nastrum, who we just had on the show this week as well. It so. is like actually comical. Like the top four is just the stupid dick measuring contest at this point, and then there's everyone else. Yeah, everyone like, else. Like, and I'm I'm included yeah. in everyone else, by the way. I'm in seventeenth. I'm still top twenty. Yeah. Which for the for the disparity, the tied for third and fourth is Ian and Waffle at exactly fifteen hundred points. And then in fifth place is Jason at eight hundred and twenty five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh yeah. yeah, so it's good stuff. Good stuff. We'll see how it shakes out. I mean, there's only a couple months left to try to get up the, uh, get your points up to try to make it. Like if I look down at, let's see, if I go all the way down to 56. Where is the, yeah, where's the cutoff here? 56 is, is 380 points. Okay. So, go win countdown. You're set. <laughs> yeah, if you win countdown, you're locked. But yeah, you got some, yeah. you got some work to do. You got some work to do. Uh, okay. And uh, I think that's a good update in terms of the leaderboard. That's, I mean, that's pretty much it for today. I don't think we have anything else really to talk about. Uh, next week is going to be interesting because we'll do the set review of MH3, which is going to be huge because this is a, a set that's going to shake up the format. So it'll be a good, good conversation. Super um, excited for that one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and hopefully I'll lose another 12 pounds. It'd be great. I mean, if you keep up that rate, you're going to be looking like me in no time, bro. You're going to yeah. be fucking shaking down. Man, by the time you see me in Cat Town, you'll be like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, Where'd you come this, from? Who's this little Ashkenazi boy? Yeah. Fucking... I'll, I'll be doing, I'll be flexing, and you'll just be hanging on my arm. Just hold it on. <sighs> yeah, there it is. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. You see how I gave you the opportunity? You nah, 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 nah. We're not going to fucking do it for the cat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, no, no, we're good. This is uh, this is Ian's tank top, by the way. <laughs> this is this is Excellent. what I took. Yeah, yeah. 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 All it's right. Really comfortable. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. I, Thanks, when do Ian. I get mine? When do I get my tank top? I don't think. I don't think. Uh, don't worry about it. Size. I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, uh, never. It'll never be the same size. <laughs> no, never. Same size. Yeah. I can use it as like a handkerchief, though. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> All right, all right. Is that it? Anyway, Max, you want to take us out? Yeah, we know this was a short one today. We just didn't have a lot of time, but we wanted to keep giving you guys content, be consistent with it. It's been a weird week. It's been a busy week for me. Uh, but thank you so much for listening to the Colors of Crutch podcast. If you are interested in CEDH coaching, that is something that I offer and have been a ton of fun with lately. So please feel free to hit me up either on Discord or on Twitter, both as Wounded Satellite. If you enjoyed our show, please do not forget to like and subscribe. If you want to support us even more, we have a Patreon you can sign up for as well. Awesome fun tiers for you. If you want to join the conversation outside of YouTube, we also have a Discord, which you can find a link to in the description below as well. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks.